Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask you guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. And of course, I do always greatly appreciate that. And if you do find any of the information in this video valuable, useful, or interesting in any sort of way, definitely hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on as that does help you never miss an update. Now, when we're talking about XRP and we're talking about this entire market, I'm really kind of focused on this weekend into Monday. We know that it is the weekly and monthly candle close. So that's pretty much what I'm really kind of focusing on, specifically Monday in general, because that's the monthly candle close. The weekly is okay in terms of its importance, but the monthly candle close is what I'm really eyeing. I do believe that if Bitcoin can make its way and I know that this is a long shot, but above 44K to close out the monthly, that would be extremely bullish. But really, you know, I'm not really focused on too big of a target point for Bitcoin. I just want to see us back above this nice demand zone back here at about like 40, you know, this is like 45K over here, but specifically this area here at like around 40.5K. Uh, just because this is the level that we we're trading at. Let's actually go to the one year so. You know, pretty much that 40.5K zone is the level that we were trading at prior to, you know, it, it was like prior to the uh, August run. This is pretty much the level that we were kind of consolidating at. You can see the bottom that we hit here at 38.1K. You know, if we could break above this and close above this zone, this will actually be very bullish for us. Similar to what we did on August 1st, this is when we broke above 38K, hit about 39.2K. That was pretty good. And it really kind of started that rally to around those September highs, which was about 52.6K, followed by that little bit of a correction down here at about like 40.6K, where the major support was. And then, of course, this led us to the all-time high. I do believe that we could do a similar run if we get that strong monthly candle close. Of course, those levels are a little bit, you know, give or take. But for the most part, I do want to see us get a lot more strength than Bitcoin. We aren't really, you know, looking too, too strong. Uh, and then with dominance as high as it is, you know, if we do sweep those lows one more time, uh, we're going to see a lot of our altcoin holdings at a little bit lower figures, including, yes, XRP. I know that we have been under about 60 cents for a little bit of time, um, but for the most part, it's not concerning me. Like, you know, we bottomed out essentially at about 56 and a half cents. If we go to the year to date or sorry, not the year to date, but let's go to the one year, um, we could see that bottom being around the areas that we were seeing back in the summertime anyways. Again, I always said watch for you know 53 cents to be held uh could we target that one last time and have a strong bounce off of that figure 100 percent. you know that's what i'm really kind of eyeing right now if we do see that nice low sweep on bitcoin especially with the dominance levels currently but nonetheless let's move on and let's talk about some other things so First off, I've been talking to you guys about CBDCs, tokenization, digitization for a very long time. In fact, it's been like almost a whole year now. Um, but in general, right, you know, we do see this from the Fed. We're excited, or I shouldn't say the Fed, but from Ripple talking about the Fed. Uh, we're excited to hear that the concept of a digital dollar is being taken seriously and appreciate the Fed's openness to hearing from public or the public on this issue. Uh, we believe that public-private collaboration is the best way to ensure fully informed outcomes. And of course, you know, when we were talking about that paper, it was more so talking about interoperability, security, efficiencies, and stuff like that. Um, and we do see the key points here. The Federal Reserve on Thursday released its long-awaited exploration of a digital dollar, but took no position on the issuance of a central bank digital currency. It was more so talking about a plethora of issues and, you know, public comment will be solicited. And of course, we even see here the biggest advocate for the project, while other off, uh, officials have expressed skepticism. So, you know, some individuals, which again, this was um leo brainerd who has been nominated as the vice chair uh they're pretty much a pro on this uh they see you know the, the they're weighing the pros and cons they see the potential behind this in my mind a cbdc would ultimately change the entire infrastructure of the financial system i'm not the only one who sees this we even see here you know a cbdc could fundamentally change the structure of the u.s financial system altering the roles and responsibilities of a private sector and the central bank and honestly, when we're talking about the problems within finance currently, we could do better. And this is why I've always said that crypto will play a vital role. Uh, I always do think that when we're talking about, you know, cross-border payments in general, right? 
Ripple plays a vital role in that area in general. But when we're talking about DLTs, ledger technology, right, that could allow for, you know, a central bank to pretty much explore a private based uh, CBDC on a private ledger. That's where a lot of the talks between will the Fed use Ripple, will the Fed use HBAR, that's where a lot of those talks come into play. And that's where I do see the mass potential behind DLT uh, in terms of, you know, for example, adoption, right? Because distributed ledger technology has always been a key thing that I also talk about on this channel, and I do think that they play a vital role. Now, we also do see from the Fed as well. Now, this goes back to yesterday, actually. So the Federal Reserve held short-term interest rates uh, steady on Wednesday and signaled intentions to raise them in mid-March, the latest turnaround removing stimulus to temper uh, um, elevated inflation. Now, I just want you all to understand that when we're talking about raising those interest rates, that's going to be detrimental to this entire market. I mean, we're talking about we could see major crashes happening. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm just saying this could be a major signal for them to actually raise them in mid-March. So that would be the time to really kind of watch for crypto crashes, maybe, you know, a major buying opportunity. I do think that we will see a little bit of some you know, relief throughout the market. We will most likely see a little bit of a recovery on a lot of our altcoin holdings, including even Bitcoin, if you are a Bitcoin holder. Um, but until then, we pretty much just have to wait and watch uh, price action play out. The structure is still kind of being rebuilt for the most part. I think that it is fairly strong. Uh, I just want to see us have a little bit more strength. Now, we also do see from Brad Garlinghouse, I'm sure that you guys are all aware of by now the buyback that they did. Uh, so excited to announce Ripple uh, bought back, you know, the Series C December 2019 shares at a $15 billion valuation. Uh, slow down. It is not in our vocabulary. Even with 2021's headwinds, uh, it was our best year on record, aka 2022. <laughs> or uh, 2021, sorry, and Ripple's financial position, $1 billion in the bank, is the strongest we've ever been. This is why I've said that 2022 will be so massive for Ripple because they're not slowing down crypto adoption at all. In fact, we do see RippleNet is much more than cross-border payments. It's bringing crypto native services such as liquidity to enterprises. Today, the network has a volume run rate of greater than $10 billion. Huge props to the team for continuously upping their game and leaning into new capabilities every year. Ripple X, full speed ahead on establishing a multitude of capabilities to the XRP ledger, NFT, CBDCs, interoperability bridges, sidechains, and so much more. Working hand in hand with devs and partners around the world, it's a multi-chain world after all. And this is actually huge when we're talking about all of the use cases on the XRP ledger. Of course, we know the XRP ledger is powered by XRP. This all provides massive utility for XRP as a digital currency. But we also see major updates within the RippleNet area for cross-border payments, for you know crypto services in general. I'm just very excited for this, right? Especially when the network has a volume run rate of greater than $10 billion. Like, this is why Ripple is succeeding. This is why XRP, in my min my opinion, will succeed uh, greatly, especially as time goes on. We know that it has done one quarter of the ODL volume for Ripple already. Imagine when it's doing 50%, 75%, and eventually 100% of all the volume. And of course, when we're talking about partnerships, we actually see this from uh, Al Fardon, I hope that I'm saying that right. Exchange, we've taken a leap in leveraging blockchain technology to revolutionize cross-border payments as we partnered with RippleNet Cloud, Ripple's cloud-based global financial network. This is huge as well. And of course, in terms of the uses behind this, uh, it is really kind of just talking about leveraging this technology and really kind of, you know, ramping up adoption overseas in these major areas. We actually see here, you know, sorry, let me get rid of that. So we are well into a digital future and payments powered by technology, which is becoming key in the region. This partnership underscores our commitment to offer new channels and opportunities to, uh, for people to remit money more securely and with more flexibility and convenience. And of course, we do see down here remittances to poor and middle uh, income countries are projected to have a growth 7.3% to $589 billion in 2021. I think that's actually funny that this is 589 but again uh, this is pretty big right 
and they're expected to grow 2.6% in 2022 as well. So this is actually going to be pretty big. And, you know, like I said, pay attention to these cross-border payment, you know, partnerships that are being built here because we even see here, you know, meanwhile, outward personal remittances from the UAE increased 8.7% or by uh, 3.6 billion DH a year in the second quarter of 2021. And of course, you could see some more volume here in DH, um, but we do see we are proud to partner to leverage blockchain technology to revolutionize cross-border payments and the thriving payments industry in the UAE and the Middle East. And of course, like I said, this is all going to benefit from instant cross-border payment money services, which again is powered through XRP. We will continue to tie up with fintechs that offer inroads into brand new you know, customer segments as we see our global processing and clearing capabilities al allied with digital technologies, uh, which will lead to financial inclusion, which again, when we know about the 1.7 billion that are not inclusive to finance uh, use cases and even finance technology, Ripple is also trying to bridge that gate as well. So like I said, Pay attention to all of these major partnerships because these real-time payments, when we're talking about cross-border payments as well, $155 trillion market, you know, we are so early in a lot of this technology. And I don't think people are realizing yet uh, just how huge, you know, crypto is going to, like the role that crypto is going to play. Like, this is why when we're talking about the retail demand, like in my opinion, I don't care about retail demand. I'm focused more on corporation, enterprises, financial institutions, banks, like the big players, right? Because retail individuals, once they kind of get a hold of something, that's when you're pretty much too late to the game. But we know that there's only 200 million crypto users worldwide, which to me is just the tip of the iceberg. We are going to probably live in a world where nearly every individual is utilizing cryptocurrency technology in some sort of way. We already know that Hedera is working behind the scenes to really kind of revolutionize many industries, many markets, and they have their name in many areas around the world already where people are utilizing the technology without even knowing that. And that's pretty much what I look forward to is when we're seeing these major corporations, these major banks, financial institutions, and you know, pretty much huge players around the world utilizing cryptocurrency technology while the retail individuals don't know about it. That's why I'm focused on these big partnerships. That's why I'm focused on the bigger names instead of the retail demand. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are. And this beautiful world has been Nick. Peace out, guys.